In today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you about fungi, but not just any fungi. We're gonna talk about a very specific type called mycorrhizal fungi. A little bit different to some of the other fungi I've talked about in other videos, but I'm gonna talk you through the key information about the main types that people are concerned with, what it looks like, how it works, and hopefully from this, you'll get some ideas, some tips to help you harness it to grow better plants or crops. So I have done other videos on fungi before. Those have generally centered around different types of fungi in the soil, such as the saprophytic type, which are really important because they break down soil organic matter and help create that nutrient cycling, feeding your plants through natural interactions within the soil. Mycorrhizal fungi works in a different way, although to all intents and purposes, its appearance is very similar. You have the hyphal strands kind of present um, to look at if you're looking under a microscope, which we're gonna do shortly. However, the mycorrhizal fungi forms a unique bond with particular plants, and if all goes to plan, that bond can last the entire lifespan of the plant. And the great thing about this relationship is it's what's called mutualistic. It benefits both parties. The plant can feed the mycorrhizal fungi using its sugars that it's produced from photosynthesis. And in return, the mycorrhizal fungi will help bring in other goodness which the plant could otherwise not have obtained. And we're gonna look at that in a little bit more Detail. This video is therefore going to be my introduction to mycorrhizal fungi, which is something I felt I've put off for a while now. I've done other things kind of skirting around mycorrhizal fungi, like my adventure into the woods to collect roots for mycorrhizal analysis, but I thought I'd kick things off in this video to open the discussion up about the two main types of mycorrhizal fungi that people are concerned with, and those are endomycorrhizae and ectomycorrhizae. But what are these two different kind of families of mycorrhizal fungi? How are they different? Well, in order to understand that, we're gonna dive through a microscope lens, look at them at magnification, and I'm gonna run this like a little quiz. I'm gonna put a picture up, give you a few seconds to work out where you think the fungi is, and then I'm gonna reveal all. And hopefully from this, you'll get a clear understanding of the main differences between the two types. So first up is ectomycorrhizae. Let's look at this picture now. I'm gonna give you some clues. The ectomycorrhizae works by covering the surface of the root. That can be either the uh, kind of long, root net kind of network, or it could be the root tips itself. But on this particular picture, let's reveal what's going on. We can see here that there is a slight difference in color. It's quite difficult to detect in fairness through this picture, but you definitely see it under a microscope. And little kind of granules, sprinklings, almost sugar-like coating around the root wall. And that tells us that this particular section of root has in fact been colonized by ectomycorrhizae. Now let's look at this next picture where we have a root tip, which is a classic place to look for ectomycorrhizae colonization. And that is because you often get a very rounded tip to the roots and a slight covering or cap almost similar to the picture I just showed you. So let's reveal in the next picture, it's gonna be obvious because there's only really one root tip here. We can see how the root has been covered. It's a slightly different color and we have that slight rounding to the edge of the root. Now this final picture of ectomycorrhizae, I love because it has lots of roots in it going on. And what we wanna look for in this picture is that sugar coating, that kind of crystalline structure over the roots again. So I won't hold back, let's just look straight at the last picture. Here's an example of a section of root that's been colonized. There are other little sections across this root as well which have also been colonized. 
But in summary, ectomycorrhizae works by covering the roots on the outside. Endomycorrhizae doesn't work by covering the roots on the outside, it works by going inside the roots. Now to look at this, do the same process we've just done with the ectos, we're going to look at some slightly more colourful pictures. And the reason they are coloured is because in the laboratory where we do this analysis, we use a particular stain and that shows everything up. So let's have a look now at what a root looks like under the microscope, first of all. And here it is. We can see that the dye we are using is blue. It's lovely sky blue. And what we're looking at here are all the different cells that make up the plant root structure. We need just to familiarize ourselves with this because we're going to be looking for something that contrasts this, which we will now do in our little pop quiz again. So picture number one of endomycorrhizae. Here we go. There are the plant root cells. And I'll give you a second just to work out where the fungi is before I reveal. And here we go. We can see actually there are a couple of fragments of the fungal hyphae from this particular mycorrhizae. Now this next picture is really lovely because it shows how delicate these structures are, especially when you put them under a microscope at 100 times or more magnification. So I think it's pretty clear where the fungi is in this image. Let's have a look now. And we can see that there is quite a bit of fungi in this particular root. So this is a reasonable level of colonization going on. Now this final picture of endomycorrhizae, I love. It has something slightly unique going on as well. And that's a different part of the fungi's anatomy. So we can see the plant cells. And once you've got your eye in already, it is pretty clear where the fungi is colonizing, but we can also see these little blobs, almost cyst or seed-like uh, objects as well, which are part of the mycorrhizal fungi too. They are called vacuoles, and they are intercellular storage bubbles, which are filled with water and enzymes, which are great for killing off and building other molecules within this complex hyphal network that the fungi has going on. Hopefully that little exercise makes it clear as to the main differences between the two. And this is really important because different plant types prefer endo or ecto. And actually some plant types don't even form this unique relationship at all. They would rather do all the work themselves. So when we consider ectomycorrhizae, I guess the key plants that you want to know about are the ones you're growing in your garden for food. When we consider the types that we want when we're growing plants or food therefore, let's have a look at the endo first, which is the one, if you remember, that grows inside the plant roots. This is going to be important for crops like asparagus to avocados, carrots, to coconuts, from leeks to lettuce, or tomatoes to tea. All of these crops, and actually 85% of plants that exist, prefer an endomycorrhizal fungi. The ectomycorrhizae, so the ones which work by covering the plant roots, plants that prefer this kind of association are generally woody shrubs and trees. That will be things like oak trees through to larch trees and a whole host more. A much smaller fraction of crops, in fact, prefer this association. In fact, it's estimated to only be in the region of around 10% of plants that exist that benefit or like this unique kind of symbiotic relationship with an ectomycorrhizal fungi. And that leaves us with 5% of plants that don't really respond well at all to mycorrhizal fungi. They tend to do the work themselves. 
the main group that I think most of you will want to know about is the brassica family. So that's things like your broccoli, your cabbage, cauliflower, kale even. Those plants, you shouldn't really worry about investing too much time into making this relationship work because they're just not going to work with you. They want to do the work themselves. And that brings me to the point. Why would these plants want to form this relationship in the first place? Well, I've touched on it through showing you what they look like. They form these unique bonds. Literally, they fuse with the plant roots, either on the outside or inside. But as they grow out through the soil with their extending hyphal network, very similar to the other fungi we've looked at in different videos, they increase the catchment areas of the root. So they kind of increase the net for grabbing nutrients and water and bringing those in and making them available to the plant. And the plant benefits from this, as does the fungi benefiting from those direct foods that the plant is providing. So managing its energy levels, the plant very cannily has worked out through evolution that the energy invested in building up this relationship with mycorrhizal fungi will return more than the energy invested in it. So the fungi will do all of that work, saving the plant a lot of aggravation. This is really important in certain conditions. So when plants are stressed, particularly in drought, the fungal hyphae will contain water itself that the plants can draw on, but also because they're out there in the soil scavenging, they can bring in more water from much further afield than just the plant roots on their own would have got them. And it's the same with nutrients. If there is a bit of scarcity of a particular nutrient, phosphorus is the classic with these guys, then the fungal hyphae kind of catchment net ramps off into the soil, scavenging for those nutrients and brings them in so the plant can benefit. Ultimately, it's a win-win situation. It is slightly parasitic in some senses. You know, the plant is praying host to something which has attached itself to it. But it's kind of a friendly, this mutualistic type relationship where the two bond, and hopefully that bond lasts for life. So it's a good thing to try and protect your soil fungi and these guys, mycorrhizal fungi, and where you can, bring in more diverse species to help form those relationships with the different plants that you are growing. Well, there you go, guys. A quick 101 on mycorrhizal fungi. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got questions, do stick them in the comments below. Eventually, I do get round to answering them all. I've been a bit slow of late, but I will try and be a bit quicker. I love hearing from you guys, so do give me feedback questions about stuff on the channel and suggestions for content as well. That really helps. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and give the video a like if you enjoyed it as well. And until the next video, I will see you.